Hello, everybody, and welcome to the opening Grand Prix of the season in 2015. We're under the floodlights of Qatar once again. And with me, Paul Malin, on our studio show today, we have a bunch of guests that are really going to be uh, quite interesting to talk to this weekend on what is going to be possibly one of the most anticipated Grand Prix of the season. We've got Adam Wheeler from On Track Off Road, Dylan Ferrandis from Monster Energy Kawasaki, Kenda Dyker from Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, and Steve Guttridge, Kawasaki Europe Racing Manager. But before we get underway with our show here in Qatar, let's take a quick look back at what happened in MX2 in 2014. Well, that was last year, 2014, and just some of the highlights of that season. But joining us now is uh, Dylan Ferrandis, Monster Energy Kawasaki, and Adam Wheeler, of course, uh, on trackoffroad.com. Uh, Dylan, welcome to Qatar. Now, the last time we saw you racing was at the FIM Monster Energy Motocross for Nations in Latvia. First time for you on the team that uh, day, and it was a, a perfect day for you, wasn't it? Are you still thinking about that a little bit? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have. Um the good memories from last year was uh, was an, ex an amazing GP for me, but uh, today is different, and, um, and this year my goal is is uh, is really easy is to win. So so I I just want to make two two motor like uh, the first motor of last year, and uh, but it's gonna be really difficult because we have uh, we have a, a really high level in MX2 with uh, with Jeffrey and uh, and Jordi, and uh, I think we we will push uh, push uh, close to the limit for for win. Obviously, just looking at some of the footage here from Latvia last year, um, not an easy track to go to. It got pretty bumpy, but from your side, a lot of people were saying maybe the wrong person for the team, but at the end of the day, you proved everybody wrong because it was France who stood, stood on the top step of the podium. Yeah, for sure. Many people talk on me, but uh, for me, it was no problem. I, I just I just know know myself, and uh, I just said to the, to the Federation, OK, I know the track in Latvia. I know that I can make a good job. and. Uh, and yeah, it was, uh, was an amazing day. Uh, uh, I saw to the, the guy, uh, Gochi and Steven, uh, okay, I go I, I go the, the second place on the start and uh, I took two really bad starts, but uh, I pushed really hard during the motor for, for comeback and was uh, was really good for, for me and for, for, the, for, the, for the, the strong team. But also for Olivier uh, Robert, the team manager. It was his last time as team manager for Team France. Yeah, it was his last, last uh, selection. And, uh, I think he had a, an, an unbelievable weekend and uh, maybe the best of his life. How did uh, Team France party that night? <laughs> <laughs> I think you know you know better than me, can because I think I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all riders do not drink, of course. <laughs> but uh, but no, it was uh, an historic occasion. I know what it's like to be stood on that top step as well in terms of motocross nations victories. But uh, yeah, it's been coming, hasn't it, for a few years? France has been very close. It, they're right up there with. Belgium as, uh, as possible winners and it finally happened that day. 
Yeah, I think we have many. We have four, or five nation can can win the motocross of nation. But uh, yeah, it's one on one day. You have three moto and the three guy have, have to be on top on three moto. And I think this year we was uh, we was this three guy and uh, and uh, it was good for for us and for the for the the my, my country and for for the French Federation. We'll talk a little bit about last year. Fourth in the MX2 World Championship, um, four podiums, including second overall in uh, Trindad in uh, Brazil, Goiás, which I think was possibly your strongest Grand Prix of the year. Two consistent motos, you came through the field as well. Would yeah. you feel the same way? Yeah, it sure was. Uh, Lomel was was good too, but um, I had a really bad crash on Saturday, so I was not not fit in, on Sunday. But during before these these two Grand Prix, we make many many testing with the, with the team with the, on the bike and uh, we change a lot the the, um, the, the setting on the, on the on my Kawasaki and uh, that changed a lot for, for me and uh, that that's why I I, I up my level I want I want to say and uh, and I finish here yeah, with a good season with uh, with Mexico I, I make yeah one the first motor was strong too uh, just in second motor uh, I had a bit back crush but yeah my 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 finish season was really good and I was really happy about about it but uh, yeah, for sure, I make many many mistakes during the season, and uh, I had really, really a lot of some little crash and big mistake and some technical problem. But it's like that. It's it's motocross, it's racing, and uh, through this year with more more experience, I will try to 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 modi to uh, to so don't make this mistake. So, what would you say then is the biggest thing you learned from last year? Is it to try and make m less mistakes? Um, I think what I learned. The, the most is is uh, with Jixi, you, we can see that it's never finished and uh, all, all can happen and, uh, and we, we see he won the championship and what was so close to for, for him and that was crazy and I think uh, now I know that every point is uh, is important and uh, every moto uh, we have to, to push uh, the first to the last lap. It's the next step for you, Dylan, to be more consistently on the podium because we saw here last year that you can win motos, you know, and you can rise to the occasion when it needs to the motocross of nations. But we need to see you more times on the box, perhaps. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It's it's really important to be consistent. Maybe it's my my worst. Uh, or yeah, I don't know what to say, but it's not it's not what I have to. It's not the best on me, but uh, it's not always easy we have to be every weekend fit we have to always have the perfect bike and this is uh, this is really difficult to to have and uh, now i think with the experience it's more easy and uh, i will try this year for sure to to be more consistent to to work better on my bike and with the team and, uh, whose decision was it to change from the uh, 122 riding number to number four i don't know uh, normally i like the number 22 because uh, i like chadrid but uh he was. Yeah, I didn't. I, I can't take his stripe was I got the, the the 22, so I take the 122. But it's not my number, and uh, I finished four last year, and uh, I take the four for remember that uh, I don't want to finish again to this place, and I I just need the number one, and uh, and yeah, it's, it's a nice number. Then and you had uh, we saw some footage a moment ago from Brazil. Then you raced in Mexico. Then you raced motocross the nations. Then a little. Paris Supercross, um, but then you had like an operation, so you're still trying to come back to full fitness. What happened there? Yeah, what happened is um, in during the French GP on Saturday, I had a really bad crash in a downhill, and uh, my shoulder go out, so uh, was not so bad because I, I I can finish the season. But uh, during Mexico, I had a really bad crash, and uh, my my shoulder go out again, and uh, I make the French Supercross in uh, in Lille. And after the next day, I had uh, surgery on my shoulder for fix it, and uh, I, I stopped to ride for during three months. And I just restart one month ago before before Qatar GP, and uh, yeah, now it's uh, it's it's good. I don't have problem with the shoulder, but uh, I need to ride more, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, uh, for sh the the first the first GP don't don't will be so good, but uh, during during the next race and uh, with more training, I will be I will be more fit. And because we are in Qatar for the first round, obviously last year, the perfect start, you won the first race. Uh, are you looking for something similar this weekend or maybe even going one step better and, and taking a double victory? I don't know for sure. I want to make a podium because it's really important for the first race. It's important, it's important to don't lose a uh, lose point. Like, uh, like yeah, I make, uh, make a lot on last year, but if I don't win, it's not, it's not a problem for me. The season is long and... Uh, 
Yeah, I remember last year was crazy because during my the moto, the first moto, I win, but I crashed two times and <laughs> it was unbelievable. I don't know how I, I how I make it, but uh, yeah, yeah, this year we are here and I know I know who, who can win and uh, I think we are we will have a, a nice battle with with three rider and uh, we can we can make uh, a good show and this is the most important. Obviously, in the closing stages of the race, it got very tight with. With you and Glenn and uh, and Jeffrey, but yeah. obviously you just held on. But you know what? By one tenth of a second or two yeah. tenth or something. Yeah, I make so much mistake in the last lap. He was he was on my wheels, and here I don't know I, what what happened, but I turned so bad, and I won. Was just amazing. Well, obviously uh, we are here, as we said, um, second overall this time last year. Um, there's obviously every possibility, every opportunity for you to be back on the podium this weekend, and I'm sure you'll be challenging not just for the podium here and race wins, but for the world title as well and uh, for Kawasaki. But uh, Dylan Ferrandis, for now, thanks for joining us here. All the best in the qualifying race tonight and also uh, in the race tomorrow evening. Uh, Dylan Ferrandis from uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki. Right, before we meet our next guest from MXGP, which is Kenda Dyker, let's take a quick look at what happened to some of the highlights in 2014 in the MXGP class. Welcome back to our studio show here in Qatar. We're now joined by our second guest from MXGP, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, Ken Dodaiko. Uh, Ken, first of all, welcome back, because obviously we missed you uh, for much of last year and after the GP in Belgium, but uh, how was the off-season? How was the surgery on the, on the wrist? Uh, yeah, all went well, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be back also. Uh, it's uh, nice to come all over here, uh, nice and warm, uh, not so warm at night, but yeah, it's uh, still better than uh, than the winter we had, uh, so it's good. And talking about last year, you did miss the first five GPs through injury. When you came back in Balcontois, do you think it was maybe just a little bit too early because, disappointingly for you, the, you didn't score in either race? Uh, yeah, uh, it wasn't the plan to go you to race there, but uh, just uh, on Thursday, uh, the doctor said you can start riding, and uh, it's it was like training. I just uh, went there, just went riding on uh, Fred Friday at uh, Lommel just before the race and just decided, yeah, why not just uh, start riding and uh, see where it goes. Can uh, you know, the problem you had from the off-season with the wrist, I mean, I remember talking to you during the middle of last year and you just said that you were losing feeling in your hand like 10 minutes into the race. I mean, it must have been pretty hard to go through the middle part of the season then trying to, trying to race in those conditions. Uh, yeah, it was really frustrating because uh, ending up uh, 15 and battling with guys you never uh, raced before, it's really hard because uh, 
Yeah, you used to ride in front and, and used to ride uh, together with uh, Tony and same speed. And as soon as I tried to push it uh, a little bit too hard, my fingers started getting numb and, and I like, was scared to hold on and, and maybe crash. But now uh, it's it's perfect. Like uh, It's getting better even more and more, but it's still already uh, up to uh, one month ago I started riding... Uh, like 40 minute motos and as soon as that uh, I started that it went uh, really well. It was like Paul I guess you know of experience as well I get breaking your wrist and trying to race a motorbike in not only painful but it takes a long time to heal doesn't it? Yeah and it's like Ken said you know it's a lot of things is you don't realize even the impact from landing off of jumps or hitting a small bump uh, a square edge bump you you're focused on a line in a corner and the next thing you hit something you didn't quite see and it can jar the wrist or jar the thumb whatever the injury is and it, it can leave you in a lot of pain but um, so I know exactly where you're coming from with that. But um, going back to last year, after, I don't know what, four GPs of, after Valkenswald, you started to pick up points in one race at each of the next four GPs. But then Italy seemed to turn a corner in Majora, seventh in the second race. Um, was that kind of a good confidence booster for you, knowing that actually you can, uh, actually you belong inside the top 10 and maybe not so far away from the top five? Uh, yeah, it was just really hard uh, that time uh, to just uh, race. But uh, those two weeks before, I stayed in Rome and, and just only me, not Tony, not uh, anybody else. I was only riding uh, on my own and that made it like a huge improvement com confident wise. So uh, it helped a lot. But then everything, I guess, you know, from that point started getting more consistent scoring moto uh, points in both motos. Um, so in the run into the end of the season, again, you know, it must have been, I guess, a bit of a, a relief in some respects. Uh, yeah, it was more relief that I, after Belgium raced like Lommel, that I could go into surgery and, and then uh, I was looking forward to, to start like early riding, see if it's better with the played out and with the surgery I had. But uh, yeah, it was really hard uh, the whole season and then... Uh, yeah, at most uh, most of the hard pack tracks were really bumpy and, and small bumps. I had it really rough, like uh, after two uh, laps that I pushed it, and uh, then it would be uh, really tough. Ken, did it feel quite special in Lommel when you took that podium? Because it seemed like people were writing you off, saying, oh, Dijk has finished, you know, he's too old, he's injured, he can't keep up, he's not going to compete with the young guys coming up from MX2, especially this year. Um, so was it nice to almost you know, stick two fingers up at people in Lommel and say, you know, guys, don't forget about me. You know, I was top three in the world the previous year. Sort of. uh, yeah, of course, it's uh, really nice, to the, even if it, it was a Belgian one. But like uh, I said, the whole season, like, pushed me so much down uh, for myself and not uh, from, uh, like, the results that are not there and just not feeling well during the day or, or, or after the races. But, uh, yeah, being in the sand, it didn't, didn't, hurt so much uh, when it was really not bumpy then uh, then it was better but yeah it's uh, nice to be that last race uh, on the podium for sure obviously it was a tough weekend in Lommel we saw dry conditions in race one complete bizarre conditions in the second race but when you said it wasn't so painful in Lommel is that because partly the the bumps are a little bit more rounded but also your technique is different you're not fighting the bike because it's maybe your preferred surface you're more relaxed yeah, I'm more relaxed. Uh, you can leave the bike a little bit loose. You don't have to grip so hard on uh, on uh, bumps like that because they're more round and more fluid. So that made it a lot easier. And obviously, it's a perfect weekend as well for KTM. Tony winning, you a second, uh, and then you went for surgery, and we know all about that now. But coming back to this weekend in Qatar, um, 2013, when we first came here, you had a second in the first race. Um, the first time we came here. I think the circuit has changed a little bit since then in terms of we've had more light so you know that's a massive bonus but what are your feelings or what are your memories from the first time we came here getting that second in the first race I guess a great start to the championship for you back then uh, yeah I uh, still remember good and bad really because uh, the first moto uh, I was second and I was riding really well but then the second moto I know it was together and it was uh, difficult uh, to have a good start and, and come through the MX2 guys but uh, yeah, it was still uh, nice uh, that year also because uh, yeah, now it still changes a lot with the, with the lights. What's it like to actually ride here? Because um, I was looking out on the track today. It looks like it's got harder over the last couple of years. Would that be right? 
Um, yeah, it's been two years for me, but uh, like if you see on the, on the screen, I think uh, it's almost the same really. It's not really much different now. There's still so much water on the on the top that it's a little bit loose and slippery, but it's gonna be I think just the same like uh, every year. Can you see better now? There's more light. Yeah, yeah. There's for sure more light, and it's a better improvement uh, since that. Yeah. And just really quick, obviously we've got a new addition to the World Championship, Ryan Villapoto. How do you think um, he's gonna fare? A lot of a lot of hype in the media at the moment. Uh, yeah, of course it's a little hype, but uh, yeah, still uh, that puts pressure on himself. But it's still, he will do good. He, he know how to ride a bike, and uh, I expect uh, good races. But yeah, maybe also not so good races like uh, somebody expects sometimes. But yeah, mm. it's not easy every weekend uh, to be on a percent. That are, you we know. are you surprised he's around a second and a half, two seconds off the the top time of De Salle in the in the time training, or not? Uh, no, it's uh, training. Racing is always something else. Yeah. Ken, just a quick word about, um, you know, in the off-season, you linked up with Tommy Searle, again, Tony Cairoli, in you know, the Red Bull Factory KTM team. Um, from what I understand, there was like a really good atmosphere. The three of you training, riding together a lot. Tommy was in Italy a lot as well. The three of you kind of together. Was, was that how it happened? You know, was it a good off-season? <coughs> yeah, it was really good. We stayed, uh, me and Tommy stayed in the campers, uh, at the workshop and then Tony lives like uh, five minutes from there so training together like doing stuff outside motocross even together so that's a uh, really good as atmosphere and also uh, yeah it's it's good to have uh, everybody pushing each other and I think uh, that will improve even more uh, during the season. All right well look Kenda Dijka Red Bull KTM Factory Racing thanks for joining us here on our first studio show of the year 2015 here in Qatar. Um, before uh, we get to our final guest, which is Steve Guttridge, the uh, racing manager from uh, Kawasaki Europe. Let's uh, take a quick look at what you can win in our competition. Well, competition time then. As it says on the graphic here, take a picture at the MXGP race, showing the Athena or Get logo. Upload the pic with the MXGP or Athena Live hashtag on MXGP Facebook page and the most voted pic at the end of the race day will win RIG 9800 uh, OGO backpack and proceed to the next step in the competition. The top three during the race season will qualify for the 2015 Athena photo competition and after the Motocross of Nations in September the finalists will go head to head to win more fantastic prizes so good luck with that one. And uh, that means we're with our final guest, Steve Gutteridge, uh, Kawasaki Europe Racing Manager. Um, good to have you here in Qatar. Thank you very much. I think the good reason that we've got you in here is because, uh, as we just mentioned with Kendra Dyker a moment ago, it's possibly the most eagerly anticipated Grand Prix campaign that we've had in a long time due to the arrival of America's best Ryan Villapoto being pitched up against Tony Cairoli, the eight-time world champion. Before we talk about his feelings and thoughts about the, his start, you know, in the in the free practice and the time training, how did the deal start to come together? When were you starting talking, and when was it kind of finally agreed that you know Vi uh, Ryan was going to be coming here in uh, in MXGP? Well, it was quite a long process, really. It started, um, I think, as you know, from from when he visited uh, Germany, the uh, Tuschental race. Um, I wasn't actually at that race, but you know, I was in Misano for the Superbike, so I knew knew it was going on. And it, it, at that time, it was just a kind of dream. Um, maybe from his side, maybe more from our side. Um, and then it, it began to sort of gain pro progress. And uh, so when I was going out to Laguna for the Superbike there, I, I called by to California to you know see them and speak to them. And at that stage, it was it was very real, you know. He, he was getting his injuries checked out and he was starting to think about racing again. Um, and then and then it went a little bit quiet as well. And uh, But then finally I was called over in August to start to speak uh, about the contract. So when he was at Teuschenthal then, thinking about coming, was it his idea to start with or was it... How did that conversation take place? If he's there looking at it, he's thinking, man, it would be cool to ride MXGP next year as an alternative. Is that kind of... I think so. I think I think he d he was kind of like over the, the whole Supercross thing. And, and you know, he's, they say how busy the schedule is there. And, and like I said, he's coming off an injury. Um, he's, he's a really open guy. He's an intelligent guy. You know, he's interested in coming to see the world and, and see the different cultures. And, um, you know, and he's also followed the likes of Caroli and things. Yeah, you know, maybe just before I, I finish my career, let's, let's have a go at it. So.
I mean, Steve, not only did Ryan coming into the team, but with Tyler Ratre as well, they must have created like a whole new load of work for KRT over the winter. I mean, it must have been a crazy period for you guys trying to get everything set up. Oh, it's been unbelievable and the team have been fantastic. Um, that it's been a total turnaround. It's like, you know, the team are good and, and they were used to working um, with riders like Gautier and Steven, um, both French. Um, you know, the teams are French based, so they're all very comfortable. Um, and they've had to turn that on its head and, and um, you know, work with Ryan and Tyler. But, but in itself, they've been fantastic. They've, they've, you know, lifted the team to a new level as well. And how's it been settling in? There's the, the training in Europe pre coming here to Qatar, but pre practice, watching him out on track, it looked impressive. I was surprised that he was only down in 11th or 12th and yeah. a couple of seconds off the pace and around about 7th in the time training, then a similar margin off of Clement de Salle. It's only practice, he's still learning the track. Are we to expect more tomorrow, or is it? It can't be won here, obviously, you know, the, the World Championship, we know that. Yeah. But what, have you had a chance to talk to him or, or Thierry in terms no, of... No, gen generally I was on the infield here and I was watching him and exactly like you said, I thought he, he looked really fast and he and he's, he's pushing on, but I genuinely think he's a little bit rusty. Yeah. You know, he hasn't raced for a long time. He's, he's, this is the first time he's, you know, been at a, a GP track. Um, and these are good guys here, you know. He's, he's had to, he, he's surprised how fast they are at this stage of the weekend. Yeah. Um, He'll go back there and, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll find something. And um, the track are bed in a bit as well. And I noticed that last lap where he got the seventh and um, he's starting to push it into the turns and sort of bank it over a bit more. And yeah, no, it'll be different tomorrow. Yeah. Steve, is there a need for a bit of a sense of calm around the team? Because a lot of people are looking at this Grand Prix, looking at Ryan, looking at KRT and, you know, almost expecting something, some sort of magic or some kind of big show. Um, is it a kind of case like, listen, guys, just, just get through this one, um, you know, sort of 36, well, 34 motos to go yeah. after this. I mean, it's, it's a hell of a long way, isn't it? Oh, for sure. And it is. And, and we do have to say that a lot to him because he, like I say, he's used to racing every weekend and, and it's hard racing. And, and he'll, be, he'll be training on the Monday after the race all the way to the Thursday and then racing every weekend. And we're saying, yeah, but it, these are GP. It's different. You're traveling. There's different temperatures. There's different tracks, different food. And, you know, you're not going to win the world championship of the first GP. You know, but you, you, you need to take it easy and just bed yourself in. So for sure, we're trying to calm him down a little bit. He wants to win straight away. I noticed in uh, Superbike, you know, you had your brand new rider there taking victory in Australia like yeah. last week. Um, you've now got a, a rider, a superlative rider in motocross. Is that kind of like a huge Christmas present or is it a huge weight of expectation on you as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's massive, but that's what we're all working towards. You know, we, we, we spend a lot of time at the races and, you know, we, we, we want to be here and successful and here to win. So, um, no, it's not it's not an issue. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, and and it's not just Ryan, you know, it's like we've got we've got a champion or an ex world champion in every group, you know, whether that's. MX2 with with Tixier or or even with the the women's class, you know, also in in the road racing as well. So this, I I, I genuinely believe this is our best rider lineup ever. And what about category. Tyler? Um, Tyler Ratter, obviously back on Kawasaki again. Went to the US after winning his world title here in 2008. Yeah. Spent a lot of time. So obviously got to fr uh, be friends with uh, with uh, Ryan. The the friendship has obviously been rekindled in that respect although it never disappeared did it yeah. but uh, what's it like having them both on the team in that respect you know I'm guessing they're getting along and if you listen to media reports everyone's kind of saying that Tyler is there as the kind of almost the the leader in in terms of guiding him through his uh, his, his visit through Europe yeah it's, it's uh, you know Tyler's been an eye-opener to me it's, it's, it's been fantastic to sort of welcome him on the team as well you know I was saying to someone earlier that you know now we go testing and it's a pleasure you know the two guys are bantering each other and um, you know great sense of humours and you know he's genuinely here to sort of you know also do his best and try and win races or like podiums um, and also help Ryan as well it's it, we're, you know he's openly here to help Ryan um, do the job and help him bed into Europe and you know get a base in Belgium and you know, know the tracks, where to train, when to train. And he's done it all before and he's a world champion in his own right. So, um, yeah, no, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy and he's, he's, you know, I really sort of hope he has a good season. Well, we're almost out of time here, but you don't just have an MXGP team, you have an MX2 team as well. So, uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki, Dylan Ferrandis, Jordi Tixier, but also a couple of satellite teams as well. Yep. How are things looking there? 
Yeah, good. It's, uh, we, we got a new team with, with Steve Dixon um, from the UK, so um, that's really nice. Obviously, we want to see Max and Mel do the best, and uh, it's great to have Max back on the Kawasaki. So we, we've had him since he was a little team green rider, so that's a pleasure. Um, also, with the idea to try and win the British Championship. Um, the, the factory team with uh, Tixie Air, I, I was at Hawkstone and, and he looked awesome on the bike and everything, so that's going well. Dylan, you know, he's gone really well here today. So, um, yeah, you know, and, and, and Thomas is, uh, is, is coming through as well, all top 10 riders. So, like I say, it's, it's, it's a depth of talent, it's really good. Yeah, and it's uh, only day one here in Qatar, so we've had free practice, we've had time training, the qualifying races are coming up a little later on. But that's all we've got time for here on our first studio show of the year in Qatar. Hope you can join us for the races live tomorrow evening here in Qatar. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week when we go to Thailand.